think everybody who's supposed to be at the meeting is at the meeting and um, we'll just start from the top again. Thank you everybody for coming to this afternoon's License Commission, Wednesday, July 6th. Um, calling this meeting to order, present this afternoon, myself, Natasha Yakovlev, Commissioner Helen Kahn, and our new commissioner on her first day, Commissioner Jennifer Ewers. Um, is there anybody now present for public comment? Seeing no public comment, we will move on to item number three, which is Jennifer's introduction. Jennifer, thank you for, for joining the License Commission. Would you like to say anything about yourself, who you are? Sure, hi there. My name is Jennifer Ewers. I'm an insurance broker over for Fink in Paris. I live here in Florence. Uh, I've lived in Northampton since 2005. Um, prior to that, uh, I'm a UMass alum and I lived in Hatfield. So I'm, I'm happy to serve. Excellent, we're thrilled to have you. Then let's get going on the rest of the agenda. Moving on to item number four, we have application for transfer of a common Victor license. This is a transfer from GLG Corporation DBA Friendlies, transferring to Friendlies Restaurants Co. LLC DBA Friendlies at 54 Main Street in Florence. And do we have anybody here from Friendlies? Hi there, how are you? Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you now. The good old Verizon commercial never goes out in style. Can never you hear does. me now? Never does. Can so, you just state your name for us for the record, please? Good afternoon. My name is Prasad, P as Peter, R, A, S as in Sam, A, D as David. Mm -hmm. Last name is Bhopale, B as Boy, H, O, P as Peter, A, L, E. Wonderful. Thank you for coming. So do you want to let us know a little bit about what you're doing? It looks like there's trans the ownership is transferring for the Florence Friendlies. Correct. Yeah. So the, the ownership was transferred from the um, earlier owner, Gary Glenn. He was a long-term Friendlies manager um, who took over those properties in, in 2000. And uh, th those are coming back to corporate as he retired. So as we stand currently, we just took over operations on the 16 and, and uh, we just operating uh, under Friendly's Co LLC, as you mentioned. So um, we, we we have not done anything to those properties. We do intend to, as, as we're um, trying to figure out, it's much better now, since you don't have to hear the background music as I'm in a restaurant. Um, so we, we do plan, we do plan on uh, doing a, a refresh of sorts, Again, we have not finalized it yet. We, we were planning on doing it. So um, uh, it will be certain things that will be done in the dining room and or in the back of the house. But uh, again, any and all those things, will, whenever we plan on do, do it, we'll reach out to, to you all to make sure, get your blessings and, and get all that stuff taken care of. So if there's anything else that you need for us to do at that point, we can discuss definitely. Okay, sounds good. Do either of the other commissioners have any questions or comments? I do not, no. no. No questions. All right. Then Helen, would you like to make a motion? Sure, I'll make a motion to approve the application for the transfer of a common victualler license um, as detailed in item four on the agenda. A second. And Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming this afternoon Perfect. and good luck. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, is there anything else do I need to stay on for? Or? I don't mean to. Uh... No, nope. you are. Okay, welcome. wonderful. I appreciate it. Is it, it um, you know, will the license and all that stuff that needs to be taken care of, will that be in the mail or anything? You'll send us the email communication. I will follow up with, um, I believe her name is Beth um, from the licensing service. Perfect. Wonderful. And get you the license. Great. Thank you very much for your help, everyone. Good luck. Okay. Have a good day. Thank yeah. you. Bye bye. Next up, we have a public hearing on an application for a change of manager, change of officers, directors, and a transfer of stock on an annual wine and malt restaurant license. This is for Ragam Incorporated DBA Bombay Royale at one Roundhouse Plaza. The proposed manager is Tennyson Z. Chiron. And do we have somebody here from 
the yes. restaurant? Yes, my name is Jeff Lynch. I'm an attorney uh, with an office in Lenox. And I believe Tennyson Sharon from Bombay Royale is also on the line okay. uh, with the board today. Okay, great. So I'm just going to make a motion then to open the public hearing. Second. Great. Um, is there anybody here to speak uh, public comment to this particular agenda item? Okay, no public comment. Then uh, Mr. Lynch, if you wanna go ahead and let us know what is happening. Certainly, thank you very much. Um, Again, uh, Bombay Royale operates at one Roundhouse Plaza, uh, Suite 4 in Northampton. Um, what we're asking for permission is to uh, change the ownership of the business. And with the change in ownership comes a change in the officers and directors. Uh, currently, there are 200 shares outstanding owned by two of the shareholders. Um, Promote Warrior is one of the shareholders and the other shareholder is uh, Vergezi uh, Atamudo, and they're both selling 95 of their shares to promote is selling 95 shares to Tennyson Sharon, and uh, Vergezi is selling 95 shares to Vince. So at the conclusion, we'll have four shareholders with Promote and Vergezi being a minority uh, shareholder with only five shares each. Um, with that change of ownership, we are also um, promoting or naming uh, Vince as a president and director of the company. And Tennyson will be a, the treasurer, treasurer, secretary, and also director. Uh, Promote and Varghese will also retain their positions as directors of the company. Um, so that does require board approval. And then I believe subsequent ABCC approval. Um, I've submitted Corey. Uh, forms for all four individuals. Um, all four have been in the restaurant industry uh, for their entire careers, um, essentially. And so uh, we don't anticipate any um, formal changes with the operations of Bombay Royale. This is an internal uh, structural change. Um, with that also, though, uh, Tennyson is asking permission to be named the manager um, of the restaurant and of the liquor license uh, specifically, Tennyson does and is uh, TIP certified. As I stated, he's been working in the restaurant industry um, for over 10 years and comes uh, well regarded and familiar with uh, Bombay Royale's operations as they currently stand. Okay. Um, Helen or Jennifer, do you have any <clears throat> questions? Excuse me. I do not. That was very thorough. Thank you yes, for yeah. going through that with us. You're welcome. I do not have any questions. Okay, and then I'm going to make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. All right. Um, I, all the paperwork's in order, so I don't have anything for the other commissioners really to discuss about it other than to approve this change. Yeah, I agree, yeah. Okay. Um, Helen, would you like to make a motion? Uh, sure, I'll make a motion to approve the application for a change of manager, change of officers, directors, and a transfer of stock on an annual wine and malt restaurant license as detailed in item five on the agenda. I will second. And Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Excellent. Thank you so much for coming. Did, I, I may not have heard, did you take a vote on the change of manager also? I think that uh, was, no. that's, was yes. Included, yes, yeah. yep, it was all in there. All in one. Okay, all Great. right, thank you. perfect, thank, thank you all so much. Yeah. Have a nice afternoon. I right. do the same, thanks for coming. Okay, moving on, agenda item number six, applications for short-term liquor licenses. First up, we have the Oxbow Water Ski Show Team at 354 Old Springfield Road in Northampton. Um, this is for every Friday night ski show, July 8th from 6 to 9, July 15th from 6 to 9, and July 29th, 30th, and 31st from 11 to 6 for the water ski show and tournament. This is an application for an all alcohol license, but I did notice in the past it's only been wine and malt, and the server is, um, the alcohol is coming from Hitchcock Brewery. So do we have somebody here? Colton, are you here for the ski team? 
It's actually Debbie Duda. That's my son. I don't know why his oh, name is. <laughs> oh. Hi, Debbie. Yes, hi. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Could you just clarify for us which uh, license you wanted to apply for because you applied for the all alcohol? Oh, I, did, I did not mean to do that. Um, okay. It's basically just beer. Okay, great. Yeah, so we will we'll amend that when we make the motion, and it'll it'll save you, I think, about forty bucks. Yeah, yeah. We don't have um, alcohol. Just yeah. Be... <clears throat> okay. So, um, do you want to let us know a little bit about the event? Yep. So we host the well. We I shouldn't say every year. Um, we do skip. So the last time we did host it was back in two thousand nineteen, due to COVID. Mm -hmm. um, but we usually host it at our site. Um, this is the 37th uh, Eastern Region Show Tournament, and we have five teams competing. Um, as of now, we have um, New York, Rhode Island, Massachusetts, and Maine, and it's just a fun-filled weekend where we all um, compete individually and then as teams on Sunday. Um, so we just wanted to incorporate this, and it was such a big hit that I thought, you know, maybe we have so many spectators now, maybe I could start introducing it for a few hours on our Friday night shows as well, because mm -hmm. people were asking. And um, so we try to, every year I try to get different local breweries, so I kind of mix it up. And this year, Hitchcock uh, was the choice. Great. I guess and do you good. normally have five teams competing or are there usually more or, or less? No, it's always been, actually it's always okay. been, Four, but we have Maine now, which is great. That's fun. Yeah. Do you have any changes to how you're setting things up from the, from the past, from when you last did it? We have no changes at all. Okay. We have the same exact. Okay. Helen or Jennifer, do you have any questions? No, it sounds like you have experience doing this and it's great that you're sort of back in business with it. It's, it's you know, sounds very positive. Thank you. I know it's been, oh, yeah. It's been a long time. <laughs> yeah, welcome back. <laughs> so yeah, so we're just really excited to get, we had, um, we had a great turnout. We hosted a big fundraiser for the Shriners. Um, was it last Friday already? But I wasn't able to get the liquor license for that. But um, anyway, we're going to host for the Shriners again next year. So maybe I can get my paperwork in a little sooner. <laughs> Put it on your calendar. We'd love to, to see you for that. Yeah. Okay, so if there are no further questions, then I will move to approve the applications for the short-term wine and malt license as outlined in agenda item number six for the Oxbow Water Ski Show Team. I'll second. And Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Great, thank you, Debbie. Thank you, guys. <laughs> All righty. Item number seven, application for a temporary extension of premises into a public space on an annual wine and malt restaurant license. This is for Wine Witch LLC at 159 Main Street, and they are looking for three parking spaces on Main Street. And I see we have somebody, your name, I forget your name now, I'm sorry. It's David Greenman. Hi, David, how are you? Good, how are you doing? Good, this is great that you're doing this. It's great that you're letting me do it, Frank. <laughs> oh, we're not there yet, but I don't see why. Sorry, that's, I didn't mean it that way. You know what I mean. <laughs> um, so you have submitted everything, and do you want to just talk us through what your what your plan is? Yeah, so it looks like we're going to put three round four tops with umbrellas in the middle, and then three smaller tables that are like two or three tops that don't have umbrella holes in the middle. So we'll have the umbrellas to the side of them. Um, we will have uh, you know, one of those chain barriers in the front of the area and around where the, uh, where the Jersey barriers are, we'll build some sort of fence-ish kind of thing like I've seen around town. I'm not sure you know, how I will attach it all. Uh, same with the planters. When I see where they are and what they are, I'll know what to put in them, but at the moment, I'm not sure whether it's going to be flowers or tree-like things or both. I think I will not be running a power line across the parking, uh, across the uh, sidewalk. That seems tricky. Yeah. Uh, so I will just be using battery it's, it's, power, it's, battery powered whatever's if I need anything. Yeah. Okay. Um, Annie, did you have a comment or are you just responding to the power line? 
<laughs> oh, I was just shaking my head no at the power line. Okay. Not, even, not even something I shouldn't have thought about, huh? Okay, good enough. <laughs> it was worth the thought. Um, do either, we've, we've done so many of these, I don't really have any questions about how this is going to go down because it will be um, inspected by the building department, but Helen and Jennifer, do either of you have any questions or comments? No. No questions. Okay. Did you have anything else, David? Uh, I don't think so. Um, I guess I guess I would need to know what the building department, you know, doesn't want to see, so I so I don't do it. But I yeah, think... probably the power cord. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and David, I feel there's... well admonished now. <laughs> if there's anything that they see that they don't like, they'll just tell you on spot, and you can change yeah. it up. It, it it won't be anything. anything okay. Yeah, won't be a big deal. Um, then if we're ready, I will make the motion. I move to approve the extension of premises for Winewish LLC as shown on plan on file with the license commission to include approximately three parking spots on Main Street directly in front of the restaurant to be cordoned off with Jersey barriers placed by the city to include the sidewalk in between limited to transportation of alcoholic beverages only through November 15th, 2022 from 4 to 11.30 p.m. and contingent upon site inspection of the building department prior to operation. Okay. And Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Great. Great. You're all set, David. Thank you so much. Now that I can say that I will have parking spaces, I hope I will not mess them up. Uh, <laughs> Any will be in touch about the DPW and yes, it's gonna. I think it's gonna be happening um, early next week. But I will once I have a exact date, I will let you know. Okay, it would be. Yeah, it would be great if it was Monday, but I'm hearing that that might not be the case. We'll, we'll live with what we get. Yes, it's whenever the DPW can work it into their into their schedule. I get you. All right. Thanks so much. Thank you. Good luck. See you, Ob. See you. All right, next up, applications for short-term liquor licenses. We have Drawing Board Brewing Company, 36 Main Street. Is Corey on the call? You know, I don't see Corey. No, either. Um, I know these are the same as they always are, um, yeah. but yeah. Um, we'll just hold that for a second and just move on to OB so he can go about his business. Um, applications for short-term liquor licenses, Building 8 Brewery, 320 Riverside Drive, Florence. This is for wine and malt on July 22nd from 6 to 11 at Bombix, 130 Pine Street in Florence for live music. And on July 30th from 12 to 8 at 320 Riverside Drive in Florence, the event is Ales for ALS. And on July 31st, 12 to 8, again at 30, 320 Riverside Drive in Florence, this is for a summer Sunday pop-up. Hi, O'Brien. How are you? Good, how are you? I'm actually uh, in Maine. That's <laughs> yeah. That's it's good doesn't... to see they're skiing. Yeah. Right. Uh, but no, I'm up here. I'm, I'm up here for another week. I'm glad I could join you. I was a little worried about it. Um, the Bombix is uh, straight up the way it's been. Yep. Um, as far as the ales for ALS, um, we are doing a special beer that label approval is happening right now uh, to benefit. Uh, we, we donate a, uh, a dollar per uh, draft and two dollars per four pack sold. Uh, we're working in conjunction with a local family who just lost their father. Uh, the mm -hmm. beer is a tribute to him this time. And uh, Yakima Valley Hops actually donates our whole hop bill for us. And it's a special blend uh, that we're doing um, that they have donated as part of this national program. So really happy to get on board with that. Uh, same sort of setup. We have our tent uh, leased and that's why we're going to do the pop up on Sunday because it carries through till Sunday and might as well take advantage of a summer Sunday to do something a little bit and um, kind of have some fun with it. And we are still kind of struggling with our uh, ADA accessibility with uh, plumbers and such for a future full uh, poor license, but uh, until then, we're happy doing this and, you know, stretching us as, as far as we can go anyway. So uh, we've been pretty busy and doing a lot of different stuff. So, okay, sounds good. Um, sounds like it's all the usual, and I don't have any questions, Helen or Jennifer. That's all I got. 
<laughs> no questions. All right, Helen, do you want to make the motion? Sure, I'll make a motion to approve the applications for short-term liquor licenses as detailed in item nine on the agenda. I'll second. And Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Great. Great. Thank you, Obi. Enjoy the rest of your week. Thank you very much. I'll be back uh, Sunday night. So I'll see you, Andy, Monday or Tuesday. Sounds good. All right. Thank Have you. a good rest of your day. You too. Bye-bye. All right, so agenda item number 10, we have an update from Jeff Finley on the all alcohol club license held by Freedom Post 28 Incorporated DBA American Legion. Hello everyone. Hello, how are you? Well, we've seen better days at the American Legion, but we're getting there. Yeah, well, it's nice to see you for an update. So what's- um, So what we've done is we've uh, looked at several methods of financing this. I apologize. I don't know why my camera's not coming on. Um, there it is. Ah, sorry, everybody. Um, so uh, our, we are in the process of getting the area surveyed, getting, we have four plots of land there, getting one plot of land surveyed um, and then using that as a building lot to sell off. And then we'll use the proceeds from that to pay everybody off. <laughs> And do and get caught up to where we need to be. Okay. And is the the intentions? Is it to reopen or the intention you're going to? Yes. the The intention is to reopen. That that's we've we've been to the banks. We've been we've tried several means of financing, um, and this is our this seems to be the most feasible one that we have. Is just to, uh, like I said, we have there's four plots there, four parcels there. Uh, one parcel in the back has got wetlands. So we actually have a surveyor coming in to create the, the sellable parcel. And then we have uh, the wetlands people coming in to say, yes, you can go back so far before you start encroaching on that. So uh, I actually signed the contract and mailed out the surveyor piece today. And the wetlands piece will go out later this week. And we hope to have something rolling uh, within the next 60 days. Sure. OK, that's all good. Does anybody have any questions? Uh, no, I mean, I, I guess so, like from our standpoint, it's just about sort of allowing them to maintain the license, you know, until until better days yeah. arrive. Is that sort of the discussion we're having today? Or, yep. and just getting an update on where you are, yep. okay. Yeah, and, and, and I apologize um, for those that came before me uh, for letting it get this far. Um, so we're trying to, uh, uh, pay off the sins of the past so we can move forward and yeah. with a new day. So it happens. We appreciate that you that you're taking care of it. You've picked it up and you're giving us the update, and you'll give us another update when you have more news. That's the fact. Now, how I being new to this this uh, this meeting is this a monthly meeting? Is this a I mean, or is it do we take summers off like everybody else seems to do? Or? <laughs> Or... We don't, do we, Annie? Oh, yeah, what's up with that? <laughs> I don't recall Sorry, that. Great question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we do. We meet the first Wednesday of every month. Okay. So yeah. I'll, hopefully I'll have a, uh, I'll have something, I'll have a little bit more news by the next Wednesday. I mean, okay, or whenever yeah. I come up, I come up on the agenda again. Yeah, just let Annie know like a week in advance so that she can be sure to get you on the agenda because it has to be posted two okay. days before the meeting happens. Okay. Okay. So Natasha, do you want to put, do you want to put a, a time to when you want to see him back or do you want to just wait until he has something to share? I mean, do you think it's realistic that you'll have something in a month? I, I doubt it. I, I yeah. doubt it. I, I, I would say probably 60 days is probably more. Do you want to plan on realistic. September then? Yeah, that'll work for an update. Okay. And I will remind you, Jeff. What's Annie, that? I'll, I'll, I'll get, I'll send you a reminder so you know, and okay. letting you know that we're going to put you on the agenda and what, when and where the meeting is. Okay. That's fair. Yep. Great. Thank you so much for coming. And I hope the um, surveying and the, the wetland conservation process is all in your favor. 
I, you and me both. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you. Thanks. We'll see you September. Yep. Bye. Um, Annie, since drawing board isn't here and it's always the same, can we go ahead and approve them? It's up to you, but I see no problem with it. Yeah, I mean, there's no changes. So applications for short-term liquor licenses for Drawing Board Brewing Company, 36 Main Street, Florence. This is for the monthly pints on the patio, wine and malt on July 23rd, 12 to 10 and July 30th, 12 to 10. Um, if Helen and Jennifer are good with it, I will go ahead and make a motion to approve the application for that short-term license as outlined in number eight. Second. Great. And Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. All right. Next up, item 11, discussion to and vote to adopt section 8.1, responsible neighbor requirement for indoor and or outdoor entertainment licensees into the rules and regulations of the Northampton License Commission. So I see um, attorney Seawald's email with his comments and then the proposed language. And I thought it was perfectly acceptable. Um, do you, do you want to give Jennifer a brief background on what, why we're talking about this? I don't sure. know if you've been. So we, since um, COVID started and we were trying to get everybody outside that brought entertainment outside for some establishments, with, which brought some issues for some neighbors. So we're just trying to um, make it clear to license holders that they have to be good neighbors to their neighbors. And even though it is a little bit vague, and I know um, Attorney Seawald probably thinks it's all wishy-washy to begin with, I think it's an important thing to, if you're having, if you have a license, you need to know all the responsibilities of having that license. And that includes being a decent neighbor. Um, and that includes our right to revisit the license that has been issued based on complaints by neighbors. That's pretty much it. So this language was, was um, you know, we saw that East Hampton had adopted something similar to their licenses. Uh, they took it a few steps further and actually require an application and a fee for every single performance that an establishment has. We didn't think it was appropriate to go that far for us, but we, Helen and I thought it was important to have some language to lay out the expectations. Got it. That's the story. Yeah. Um, I did notice, I, I reread it right before we got on today, and there's just the word of, I think, is missing in oh, that where? paragraph. And now I got to remember where. <sighs> Oh, to be, oh, it's in like sort of the third or fourth from the bottom. Um, it says patrons entering or leaving the premises may be the subject of a hearing. It's before a hearing. It just says subject. Oh, yep, yep. Yeah. Okay, perfect. I will make that change. So now do we agree with it, Natasha? I'm just kidding. <laughs> Oh, no. I think this has to go back to the attorney. Right. The old version was okay, but <laughs> I think it's even better now. <laughs> now that it's grammatically correct, I don't know if I can abide by this. Um. <laughs> I think it's great. Oh. Um, then do we need to read it for the record, Annie, or can we just vote on it? Um, or is it just a discussion? No, I, I you don't need to read it. I can I can put a I can copy and paste the language okay. into the into the minutes. Okay. So we, we do need a vote to adopt it. Yep. Then I will make a motion to approve and adopt the new language for section 81 in the rules and regulations. Second. And Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. And just as a point of process, do you want me to, I know you want this on all of the licenses. Do you want, do you want me to revise all of the entertainment licenses and send them out individually? I mean, I guess that's probably the only way to do it. Otherwise we would wait until 
December for renewal time. So would you like me to go ahead and do that now? Administratively, what is, I mean, it makes more sense to do it now, but administratively, is it, is it a, an, a, too much of a burden for everything else that you do right now when you're going to be doing it again in a few months? Um, I mean, it, it's fine. I can, I can get it done. Yeah. Helen, do you have, do you feel strongly one way or the other? Um, yeah, no, I mean, I think it'd be good to get it out there now. I guess my one question is, is it um, equal, less time consuming to write the same letter to everyone saying this is now amended to your license versus having to actually redo every license? And, and uh, I don't know if attorney Seawald needs to chime in and say that that's okay or not, but or just, well, it just sort of like, I'd like to, you know, we're bringing to your attention that the commission just voted on this and this will be, and this is now considered part of your license. I mean, so if I were to do that, then I would want, well, I'm going to do that anyways. I'm going to need to create a, a, like a cover letter to let them know why they're getting um, their mm -hmm. entertainment license in the middle of July. Um, so yeah, I, I will, I'm going to do that anyways, but I, I would not want to send them the letter and then not send an updated version of the license just because it wouldn't, the license they have now wouldn't be consistent with what we're saying is new. Yep. So you can't say like, please attach this to your license and make it, put it on them. I just don't know if that's um, trying to save you. Um, no, that's just, I, I would feel more, I would feel more comfortable okay. just getting it all out there and giving it to them just. Sure. Yeah. Then okay, go for it. I say. Yep. Yeah. Let's do that. All right. So we all set for for that. Yes. All right. Item twelve: request to rescind a previously approved short-term liquor license for the Academy of Music, two seventy-four Main Street, for a performance that was meant to be on June twenty-fifth from seven to eleven. This was a Coro Fest, Choro Fest, wine and malt license. Um, it actually, it, they actually did have the, the event. They just didn't have enough, I guess, ticket sales to have a bar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so Jennifer, the Academy of Music only gets a certain number of licenses a year as a nonprofit. So they try and pick and choose what performances they're going to come to us and get a license for. So we often see them on a monthly basis, just planning out for the next couple of months. And during COVID, when they were having shows, sometimes a show would get canceled and then we would rescind that license because it didn't happen. So this is the first time that this has happened where they just changed their minds. I follow. It's actually not just the Academy. It's anybody who wants to get a short-term liquor license. Um, they can't have they can't get one for more than 30 calendar days, just, just so you know, for the, for the future. So even Building 8 Brewing, he is probably coming up on, he's in his 20s maybe. Yep. So, um, so any, it's really, it doesn't matter if you're a nonprofit or for-profit, anyone getting short-term licenses, they can't have more than 30 in a calendar year. So in his, in, in Building 8's case, the licenses that he's getting for Bombex count towards his 30. Yes. Should Bombix be getting those licenses? And I've actually talked to Cassandra at Bombix about this. Um, so, I mean, they're all, everyone who gets these is aware of the, the limit. Yep. Um, okay. But yeah, so, yeah, I don't know what you want to do about this yeah. one. Yep. Well, I mean, that's a, if I, I mean, that's an interesting question. So that, I mean, I don't know if it's considered gaming the system, but officially that, that can be that he could apply for, you know, if he was not doing other things, he could apply for potentially 30 um, short-term liquor licenses, let's say at Bombix, and then they could separately apply for 30. Could someone do that? Yes. Okay. It's, it's a loophole. All right. So, interesting. It's not, it's not premise-based. It's, applicant base right yeah you're going to delete this part on the recording right <laughs> it's just another <laughs> it's just out of game the system <laughs> another issue with uh, these antiquated liquor laws in massachusetts 
yeah yeah interesting i never thought of that okay huh. yeah so back to the academy um i mean i i would not be opposed to rescinding this license but with letting them know that in the future low attendance isn't a reason to rescind the license after the fact right i don't so, they should be punished for the fact that they had low ticket sales and there's no i mean it's I, there's no, there's, there's no harm to us. You know, it's not as if a license was given to them and it couldn't be given to somebody else because it was given to the Academy. So really what's the difference? So I, I was, when I saw this, I was a little hesitant because I didn't have the physical copy of the license in my hand before the event. If, if I had the license, before then we would have known because you have to have the license on the premises and so so I I kind of question it with Melissa and she sent me a concessions report that sh that indicated that they didn't sell any alcohol so that mm -hmm. that, that was helpful but um but yeah I I see what you're saying about um I, don't know. I mean, it's a procedural thing and, and it hasn't happened before. So she wouldn't have known what procedure to follow. Seems to me to be what happened, right? Uh, what do you mean? Just in terms of, of her not knowing to return the actual physical license. Well, she knows that because all the other licenses that we, that we were sin for them, she knows that I need the hard copies back. Oh, okay. Um, maybe not before the show per se, but she does know that I need the actual physical copy back. Do Helen or Jennifer have an opinion on this? The, I mean, has she since then given you a physical copy? You're just saying, or she still needs to give um, you the physical she copy? She has not. Let me see when she. So she did, she emailed me about this before the event. Oh, okay. If that helps. It was, yeah. it was Friday, June 24th at four o'clock. She said, I'd like to return the license for Choro Fest. We didn't sell enough tickets. Yeah, I don't have a problem. I think that's great. I think since she notified you, I mean, I certainly understand it from a business perspective you know, that they're not, they don't want to sort of waste the license and even waste having a bartender, I guess, stand there, you know, or do that. Um, so they didn't actually cancel, did they cancel the whole? No, the show, show, the show went on, the show on. went on. <laughs> <laughs> but, Is there a concern in the future then that someone could say after the fact that, you know, we didn't sell sufficient tickets and we want to rescind the license? I mean, I, I feel that not everyone could generate a concessions report Right, that's a good point. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But I'm just trying to see uh, the other side. Of just saying that, and then they actually do go ahead and you like serve alcohol. Is that what you mean specifically, or just that this is opening some door to like, I don't know. I mean, or yeah, I guess so. Like, from what perspective, Jennifer, are you saying? Oh, if um. I'm looking at it from the perspective of an unsuccessful event, right? I, I think we don't want to encourage folks to just pull a license and, you know, we'll see, right? Maybe we'll do it. Maybe we won't. Maybe, right. I don't know how realistic a feeling that is. I mean, yeah. I just have some concern going into the fall and winter um, mm -hmm. with uncertainty. I, right. I don't think most people think in those terms, but I just think there's a little bit of we're just cracking the door open a, a little bit if um, allowing folks after the fact to say, well, it didn't really work out. Mm -hmm. and, but they have in the past, has it been that like I know we've rescinded it because events actually didn't take place like they would get a list of they would say these mm -hmm. 10 events are going to happen. And then it turns out that one or two of them actually don't even happen at all. I know this is a little bit different. And then we go ahead and say like, okay, 
like you know give us a, give it back and you can have those two at another time or, or use it for something else so yeah this is a little bit different that the show did go on and, and they just didn't yeah. but at the same time i mean i guess you could say it's still the same thing they still did not i mean it sounds like i don't think they were just waiting there and people didn't buy it sounds like they just didn't serve alcohol yeah right? that's what yeah yeah i mean the concession report that was sent i mean and it's an excel sheet you can you can modify you it but <laughs> it, it did have it like it it showed every like the skittles and whatever else they sell but then under alcohol there was no beer no wine right right and in fairness they did notify annie so i didn't yeah type that but they did email annie yeah. they, she did before the fact so she knew yeah. that night she knew before the, the show that they weren't going to have a bar. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, since she notified you the day before, I don't have a problem rescinding a license. Yeah. If she hadn't notified you, then that would be an inappropriate, in my view, an inappropriate reason to rescind the license just based on a poor turnout. Because like Jennifer saying, you know, we're, and all of this, you know, Jennifer, every meeting, you're going to have something that none of us have ever seen before. <laughs> so <laughs> everything is opening up a potential can of worms. Um, but we, but we don't want people getting licenses and then deciding that the turnout wasn't good enough to use it in the moment. Exactly. So rescind, how do we feel? Um, I feel okay with rescinding it. And also just because, you know, they have such a long track record of doing mm -hmm. this, uh, yeah. you know, this all the time, but getting so many licenses and I've been very good about it and with yep. the communication. So yep. I don't think that it'll become commonplace for them, you know? So, yeah. Right. And, and I mentioned more of, of a rescission process than <laughs> it's certainly not a criticism of the Academy. Uh, oh, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Totally. Two separate in my mind. Um, yep. Agreed. Okay. Um, then I'll make a motion to approve the rescinding of the previously approved short-term liquor license for the Academy as outlined in agenda item 12. Second. And Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. 13, approval of June 1st minutes. When do you wanna take that one? Or I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of June 1st, 2022. I will second the motion. Um, and I, um, sorry, I'm trying to do two things at once. Jennifer, I just um, suggest you abstain from this vote since you- um, I was not sworn in. You, yes, you weren't even at this meeting and yes. So um, Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer. I abstain. Perfect. Um, there's someone in the waiting room. Oh no. And I'm concerned, but it also says John. And so my guess is that it's John Newman. So that his usually says JJ's. I thought he was in the waiting room the whole time. No, he just popped in. And he was at, he did come into the office today to pick up his entertainment license. Um, and he asked about the good neighbor language. Um, so this is maybe why I'm thinking it's him, but I'm also paranoid. <laughs> um, if he's in the waiting room, I mean, at this point, does he have a, he would just be observed, if you let him in, it would just be observing yeah, he, he's not on the agenda. Right. Yeah. So, but yes, but I understand. understand. I guess I'll just I'll admit him and then if close it down if it's yeah, I will put my can, finger on the you, block button in case. Just apparently. It's okay. Okay. <laughs> um okay, so new business. I noticed today that the state uh has approved an extension to the requirement for meetings. Mm -hmm. Yes, it. The Senate voted to approve the extension. The House has not taken it up yet. Okay. Um, 
but the deadline is July 15th. Mm -hmm. So they, they understand that there is a, um, it's time sensitive. Yep. So um, hopefully they will get this done before the 15th. Um, in that case, does the commission want to continue with remote meetings? I do. I'll say that I do. I mean, I just think, I mean, it's certainly, honestly, it's easy for me when I'm racing from somewhere else because um, I don't have to put pants on. I'm kidding. Um, anyway, no, no, but, but I, in some ways, I think it's a lot more accessible for people to be able to, to zoom in at this time of day for not just for myself, I think for others as well, hopefully if they have access, then to actually come downtown and park and come on in. That, I mean, that's my feeling about it. I miss meeting in person just because I miss the structure of it. But, um, but for all of the reasons that Helen just outlined, like I think it's amazing for people to not have to leave their place of business to tend to business like this, you know, cause it is a pain to have to drive downtown and park and, and come in and wait your turn. And so, yeah. What about you, Annie? Do you, do you have a thought on it? Um, I mean, I'll do whatever you want to do. Um, there's also the possibility of going hybrid. Yep. Um, hmm. But I think I think it is convenient for you three who are taking time out of your days, and it is easier and more convenient for the business owners. Wow. Yeah, I mean, the fact that O'Brien zoomed in from uh, from Maine today, you know, he wouldn't have been able to come. But exactly. anyway, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt if you had more. <laughs> oh, no. I mean, for and for all the reasons Helen stated and also the reasons Natasha stated, I also miss meeting in person too, but I, 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 I'll do whatever you want to do. Would a hybrid a model be complicated for you? So the hybrid model, we just, it's implemented in council chambers. It's a little clunky, but it works. Um, with a three member commission, I don't know how that would work with, I don't know how it would work with who has to be here and who doesn't. Um, have to check on that, but um, it can be done. It's it, it's worked so far. Yeah, um, there haven't been any. There was the ARPA commission met there, and I was actually present for that meeting, and it and it worked. Okay, I mean, I would be open to trying hybrid if you wanted to try that, Annie. And hybrid does that typically mean that? like the commissioners are there, but anyone else who can't attend would be there? Or does that apply to us too? Like if we are out that's of town, we could attend. Yeah, that's what I would have to check on. Um, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if you would have to be there or you wouldn't, I, I don't know. How did city council do it? Were all the councilors in chambers? They haven't done it. Oh, they haven't done it. Okay. No. I would think that the state Senate would adjust language to reflect what a quorum then means mm -hmm. if it's a hybrid model. So then yep. not everybody would have to be present. I mean, hybrid doesn't make sense if it means if we all have to be there and the public doesn't have to, that's that's not really hybrid, <laughs> you know? So yeah. So to me, hybrid would be great if it meant we can be there if we want to, but if it's better not to, that's totally fine. Okay, so why don't we, well, I mean, if this doesn't pass, I'll see you all in August in council chambers. Right. Um, it, so I, I guess we'll play it by ear. And if it does, if it does pass and I can, I can figure out the parameters and we can discuss it at the August meeting. Yep. Um, and if it doesn't, then I'll see you in person in August. Okay. We'll get that sweet parking pass again. I know. <laughs> Which is our entire stipend. 
Um, <laughs> Jennifer, you get a parking placard that can only I had no idea. Yeah. I have them. I had to pick them up last week, your FY23 parking passes. Oh, really? Wow. And right it is downtown. It's technically just for the meeting time. So it's just for the meeting. <laughs> yes. So it doesn't even, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> just um, makes you feel important when you. That's out. right. <laughs> <laughs> Right. What color is it this year? It's bright red. Nice. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Draw attention to it. Have you received feedback from business owners that zooming in was was a tough option for them? I just want to make sure I'm going on the, the best assumption. I, I'm assuming that Zoom lets anyone jump in from anywhere so it works well for people. I'm just yeah. asking if you've received pushback the other way, Annie. I have not. The only okay. thing I've heard is, oh, great. It's still meeting virtually. Oh, this is like, oh, perfect. It's still virtual. Like, I hope you, I hope it always stays virtual. Like it's never on the other end. Right. Yeah. Thank you. I just wanted to be clear. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great question, Jennifer. Cause I, I was making that assumption too. I mean, it's like they're in their restaurant and they just have to turn on the computer, you know? So it's, yeah. yeah it's like really Moshi Moshi cool. was making his sushi that night. <laughs> Oh. we were um he was here so yeah well i just feel like a lot of the business owners have tough enough jobs that if we can make it a little simpler yeah i i hope that the state allows us to keep the, this option yeah. i think they will so, yeah I, I i would say they will so yeah. we will um i guess we will play it by ear sounds good does anybody else have any new business I do not, although I just want to bring your attention to a question in the chat. Can I, John has asked if I can ask a question or no, and that is up to the chair. Oh. <laughs> One question, but it won't be a lot. We're not going to have a lot of discussion. Awesome. Sorry, I, I just missed a meeting. I tried to get to agenda 11. Um, thanks for taking the question. I just want to know what the broad overview of the uh, the good neighbor uh, uh, topic was just really quick because I have an event on Friday. And I don't want to make sure I'm in the right. I know what I'm doing when, you know, things go, go on on Friday. So I just want to make sure uh, I'm on the, on the same page with the board. Yeah, we can read it. Yeah, that's all I need. Yeah. Okay. Um, Annie, I don't know where or I can. I can e email it. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, I just didn't know if you have the minutes and time before then. That's why that's why I wanted to ask the question now before yep. it took too long. Yep, uh, totally. Yeah, it. if Andy can email it, that would be great. Yeah, I will send it. They just they just approved it, so I will send the language. All right, sounds good. And then just to answer the question about the uh, business owners, the on the uh, Zoom is thousand percent the way to go. Thousand percent. Yeah. All Thank right. you. All right. Thanks very much. Thanks, John. All right. Any other new business? Not for me. Well, then I will make a motion to adjourn. You want to second it, Jennifer? I will second. <laughs> Great. <laughs> um, and Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Great. Thank you so much.